John Edward Mack was born in New York on October 4, 1929. In 1955, John graduated from Harvard Medical School. He married Sally Stahl in 1959. In the late 60s, he founded the Cambridge Psychiatric Hospital and would rapidly secure it a worldwide reputation. In 1972, he became a full professor of psychiatry at Harvard University. 1977 was a turning point in John's career. He was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for his biography of Lawrence of Arabia. When he treated his first experiences, John had had almost 40 years of professional psychiatric practice. In 1994, his conclusions about alien abduction phenomena caused a scandal, yet they would be supported by many other medical teams. He wrote that the reported abductions were not hallucinations, nor were they schizophrenia, psychosis, or any other mental condition. He stated these abductions were not dreams. The abductees were sincere, they had nothing to gain, and were aware of the absurd nature of their experiences. Amazingly, they had all told the same story, down to the slightest detail. Just south of Boston, in Martha's Vineyard, I met up with Dominic Kalimanopoulos. Dominique was John's research associate, research which took them all over the world. After John's first book was published, the question arose as to whether this phenomenon of extraterrestrial abduction was occurring outside of the U.S. as well. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Without exception, everywhere we went, people had experienced some of the classic abduction um, with the gray beings that is, has been so commonly reported in the States. We talked with a lot of individuals about their experiences, but there's something about talking with, you know, a group that has collectively experienced the same thing um, that is just more convincing and seems more legitimate. In the case where we spoke with young children who had experienced a visitation from two UFOs and the two beings who had hovered over their playground during recess. This was at a small secondary school outside Zimba, outside Harare in Zimbabwe, and 60 children at recess had seen these two UFOs hover, two alien beings come out, and I even remember how one little girl described it to me. She said, it was as if they were kind of floating above the grass towards us, or hopping across the grass towards us. And in this case, um, I remember John's voice, very specifically as he asked one little girl. And these were very disciplined, sort of post-colonial, ch little children, um, different races with braids, very well spoken. And John said, well, what would you call these beings that you saw? And she'd say, I'd call them aliens. I'd call them alien beings. In September 1994, over 60 children from this school in the suburbs of Harare, Zimbabwe, witnessed several objects landing and two beings coming out. Just over two months later, John and Dominique came to the scene to work with the children, their parents, and the teachers still suffering from shock. John, who essentially specialized in child psychiatry, devoted a great deal of time to interviewing the children. Something scared you, is that right? Yes. What, what scared you? The noise. What noise? The noise that we heard in the air. You heard a noise in the yes. air? What was it like? Like a roar or a buzz or a hum or what kind of a noise? It was like someone was playing a flute. It was scary myself. It was scary because you saw something yourself? Yes. Mm -hmm. I saw a little object hovering. It was quite big actually and then there was little ones all around it. We saw something silver and then we quickly ran to the loud to the logs and we saw a silver, silver thing and we saw a man standing next to it. Uh, what was it, what did it feel like when he was looking at you? I felt scared. It, it felt scared? What was scary about it? Well, I felt scared because I've never seen such a person like that before. Did you see the eyes? What did they look like? They were um, going like that. Where was the pointy part? It was the pointy part in here, or was the pointy part okay. out there, up there? And what was the feeling when you looked at the eyes? Um, it was scary. Mm -hmm. And what scary? Why? What made it scary? 
The eyes looked evil. Evil. Mm -hmm. And what was evil about them? Mm -hmm. Say what you mean by evil. It, the, it looked evil because it was just staring at me. With what? Staring at you as if what? As if to do what? As if it wanted to come and take us. As if it wanted to come and take you. That was the feeling you got? That it wanted you to go with it? Did you feel like you wanted to go with it? No. Did you feel, what was the effect on you when, when you felt it wanted to have you go with it? Well, I just um, walked away and I started crying. They came running up here in such a panic. And, I mean, even if we had staged it, they could not have run all together like that. Even if we practiced it, I don't know how many times. <laughs> that they came up here like a living snake. And they just came, we were in a staff meeting, and we just heard them screaming, screaming, ah, and then they were here, you know. And the child can't make that up. <laughs> I was very skeptical in the beginning as well. Um, I believed that they'd seen something. But I wasn't prepared to accept that it was anything supernatural or anything like that. But I think the consistency of, of what's been going on indicates that it was more than I was prepared to admit in the beginning. So both of them were running. One was running um, in the trees and the other one was running, running across the ship. Because mm -hmm. there were also trees here. Mm -hmm. The eyes were, were like more pointed as they came in toward the center of the yes. head, is that? No, more circular. And this was all black. In here. All black. Now you've made pupils. Do they actually have pupils or black? white? What? The pupils were white like that. So you saw white in the center? Yes, like that. Mm -hmm. Was he near the, uh, the silver object or was he far? No, on top. On top of the silver yes. object. Okay. And um, did you look at him? Yes. Did he look at you? He didn't give me the creeps, then I stopped looking Gave you the creeps. Actually, in your drawing, you showed him standing up, didn't you? Yes, I had to draw him standing up, was I couldn't draw him sitting. <laughs> <laughs> what I thought was maybe the, the world's going to end. Maybe they're telling us the world's going to end. Um, well, why do you think they might want us to be scared? Mm. Because um, we, maybe because we never we don't look after the planet and um, the area properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me. This is. Is this an idea that uh, you have had before that we don't look after the planet properly in the air, or did this idea come to you when you had this experience? When I had this experience. Mm -hmm. And how did that idea come to you from this experience? This is a little hard, but try, try to be with me here, okay? When you, how did this idea come to you when you had this experience? I just felt all horrible inside. You felt horrible. At what point did you feel that? When you saw the craft or at, when you got home at night? Or when I got home. You had that horrible feeling when you got home? Yes. And to say more about that horrible feeling, Lisa. What was it like? It was like in the world, all the trees will just go down and, and there will be no air and people will be dying. Mm -hmm. And those thoughts came to you, had you had those thoughts before this experience? No. No. And did, how did those thoughts come to you? Did they come to you from the craft or from... From the man. The man. And the man, did the man say those things to you? Uh, how did he get that across to you? Well, he never said anything. It's just that the face is the eyes. What, what was the sense you got from those eyes? He was interested. They uh, describe these experiences or these events like a person talks about something that has happened to them. Uh, and. When you're talking with a, a psychotic who's telling you something and it's a delusion and you feel 
that it really didn't happen. I can tell. I mean, I know this is something that a person wants me to believe, or they're frightened, or they're distorting reality in some way. There's nothing like that here. These are people of sound mind, by and large, uh, telling me something that's very... They know that I might think they're crazy, and so they're a little concerned about telling me, and and they, they're very full of questioning themselves and doubt, and I mean, the way, and then they describe something very real and intense, a light, or something happened to their body, or uh, it, it, it's the whole quality of the way they talk about it is the way a person talks about experience that, that happened to them.